G'day there ladies and gents of the internet. I am the Braveheart Aussie and welcome to a journey in world building. This is the third and final of our setting deep dive mini series into the emerald crystalline world of Copachia. This has been a really fun one and I'm eager to finish today with a bit more of an exploration into the unique terror and challenge of the world, the resonance. We've actually already touched on the resonance in the past two world building episodes as well as in the lore videos. It's such a fundamental and core part of the world building for Copachia, to the extent that it influences and impacts and permeates so much of the world, economy, governance, religion and everyday interactions of the people. The unknown origins of the powers of the crystals, the nature of the partially suborbital sound and vibrations they emit, and the growing and building discomfort, pain and then torture together create a local terror on Copachia that is unique. The fact that it isn't an instantaneous death, or even a harmful phenomenon immediately, means that there is an, also an element of building suspense when people spend more and more time on the planet. It becomes a question of resilience and resolve as to how much pain and anguish someone can sustain, thereby making it as much a form of self-torture as something inflicted upon them. But this slow burn approach to this terror means that there needs to be some form of incentive or motivation to remain on the planet and strive to not succumb to the pain and death. The idea of having a place of connection and peace on the far side of a dangerous and often deadly trial is not a new concept, but is one that remains highly appealing to the human psyche. It's actually the very same concept of an afterlife in many cultures, and it represents a point past pain and death where there is peace, joy, love and comfort. So even with a 1 in 10 chance of succeeding, for the most compatible, and passing through the anguish and the pain and into the collective would be sufficiently high odds for someone to attempt to adjoin the resonance. This temptation of being part of something unique, with a philosophy of togetherness, support and strength in unity, would be particularly appealing to those in the galaxy with nothing, who have longed for nothing more than this. In some ways, the claims of the Covenant that the Collective are proselytizing on the week explored in last week's lore episode is not without its merit, at least when viewed from the outside. By establishing chapters of the Collective across the galaxy, preaching utopian-like philosophies and venerating Copachia like an almost Gaia-like manner, the Collective has all the elements that would breed a fanatical devotion amongst the uninitiated and even raise the possibility of those people choosing to take pilgrimage to Copachia and partake in the ritual of acceptance. This isn't the intention of the Collective and they will often actively go out of their way to dissuade people from undergoing the ritual. Yet from the external viewpoint, the vast crystalline towers, cities and the expansive fields of honoured death, it's understandable that any such words would fall on deaf ears. In terms of using this setting for our TTRPG, I could absolutely see the GM getting to players to roll progressively more damage for the longer they stay on the planet, creating something of a natural time pressure or end point, as well as a mechanism for inflicting non-combat damage on the party before some form of encounter. Of course, this assumes that the people are on the planet voluntarily or intentionally. As we saw in the first lore episode of the series, the fear and anxiety of being stranded on Copachia would have on an individual as their pain and discomfort and anguish grew would be a form of torture unto itself. This isn't aided by the fact that the planet is so sparsely populated, so the chances of finding anybody who would help would be very remote, effectively relegating the person to a painful and lonely death. A related terror to that of the residents is the fact that the collective members are afforded something of a crystal-aided telepathy that functions even when off-planet. As we saw in the last lore episode, such a power can be more devastating than an entire war fleet. This raises the possibility for devotees of the collective to being able to inflict suffering and torture on others directly in their minds, making such an attack almost undetectable. This threat is generally offset by the pacifist and spiritualist nature of the Resonance Collective, reinforced by the hive mind of the Resonance itself that tends to craft well-meaning balance to mature individuals. Yet as we saw with the Covenant's conceit, the power is still there to inflict harm in the minds of others, particularly when the Collective devotees are given no other choice but to defend themselves. And that ladies and gentlemen is where we're going to leave today's episode. A short one given the work we've already done to date on this terror and its central role in the episodes and videos in this mini-series to date. This will be the only video this week as I am currently travelling, but I'm hoping to have the corresponding final lore episode for Copachia next week before I return. 
In the meantime, I'll be working on my TTRPG, which I am currently trialing in my Discord channel, so expect to see some new posts coming out very soon as we make more updates to the gameplay, the settings, mechanics, and other aspects of the game. I will also be working on a formal guide and some updated information which will form part of the upcoming TTRPG guide video. But that is it for today. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day and may the journey continue.